Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet for up to $1,000 back in a beautiful bonus bet. Basketball comes on every night, almost every other night. You can find something that you could play some of that bonus bet money on. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Loses, okay, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. The crown is yours. We are back with another one. Vice Lombardi, y'all know who I am. Y'all ain't got to tell you where to find me. Y'all know where to find me. But we have Brian Broaddus, ex, ex uh, Super Bowl scout Brian Broaddus. Uh, love the Star Podcast, DallasCowboys.com, the, the, the incredible draft show. Shouts out to you and all of your, uh, you know, all of our friends over there that do the work with you. And uh, Brian Broaddus, B-R-Y-N Broaddus on Twitter. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Vosh. Always good to be with you on a Friday. Uh, I look forward to this. There's a lot of things that I do platform wise that it, talk and draft, but man, my draft show uh, with you mentioned all the guys and gals I work with over there. Uh, the Fridays I get to talk with you, break down things, chop it up. We have a great audience, a great platform, great opportunity. So yeah, man, and it's getting close too. Yeah. We're inside 50 days now, so before we know it, we'll be handing in cards here and talking about draft picks. So looking forward to that, and we got free agency right around the corner too. So. A lot going on for us to talk about. Should be fun. Me and you got a couple more weeks to do this, and maybe like a week after the draft, we could talk about the seven or so guys that really matter to our Cowboys, right? So we'll just cross that bridge whenever we get Oh, there. you're not going to get rid of me that easy, man. As long as I have – Man, as long as I have Fridays open and stuff like that, I, I mean, if you got Fridays open, I got Fridays open, man. I, I, you ain't, I'm only gum on your shoe, bro. You know, you ain't getting rid of me that easy. I wouldn't dare impose on a legend. See, people, all you got to do is ask. Open your mouth. Close mouths don't get fed, all right? Let's get into some work. The people came here for some work. Let's do this. Um, yeah. I got a question for you, Brian. Before we get into this, uh, so Daniel Jeremiah dropped his top 50. It's like a post combine top 50 is very media e to, you know, the combine happens. Hey, here's a direct reaction to ha- to, to what happens after the combine and big change happens, Brian. And, and I was thinking about this big change and maybe I, I shouldn't be as old manny about this or whatever. Right. But I feel like we all get the same film, you know, and yeah. the film doesn't change over time. But when you look at media scout boards, their boards are constantly changing. It's very volatile, you know? Right. But I'm like, damn, man, like Tyler Guyton was a top three tackle for you here and no new film came out and all of a sudden he way in the back where I, I thought he would go. And Patrick Paul is not even on your top 50 where I thought he would go. Like no new film happened, Brian. So I want to ask you this. You, were, you're, you actually ran a real draft war room, right? This is media scout stuff. So shout out to Dan Jeremiah. He does fantastic work, right? But how much does a real, like for a real team in the NFL, how much does a real draft board fluctuate throughout the year? Very little. Uh, What happens is a lot of these scouts, what you do is when you get together and you put your board together, you get these scouts and uh, there's a lot of scouts in there that are seeing these players for the first time. And you're always having to present your guy. You're always, okay, it's your area, it's your guy. So you present that player, you watch the tape, you get the medical, the combine, all those things happen. Your board will fluctuate only if the medical information, if Jim Maurer, the trainer, Britt Brown, for example, uh, they come in and they say, listen, uh, the medical is not good on this guy. Uh, Example, Peyton Wilson from North Carolina State, the linebacker, okay? So if you get medical information, you know, you go into the school, you've got the evaluation, you think he's a hell of a player, you've watched the film, you've done the interviews, you've talked to the kid, everything about him is super positive. Then your trainer walk in, they say, he doesn't have this, or he doesn't have that, or he's got too many surgeries on a shoulder, or too many surgeries on a knee, or hey, maybe he's missing an ACL. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that kind of go... Uh, you know, go with a player, and that's when uh, a player will drop. You know, usually you'll just you'll do this, you'll do the work, you put the tag up, the the trainer will talk, and that's usually the final piece to it. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of where it's at, and the trainer will tell you that, hey, here's the risk. I, I went through it with Jeremiah Trotter Sr. Uh, and when I was in Philadelphia in '98, um, 
trainer told me, he goes, listen, I don't know about this knee doctor. I don't know if he's going to play 10 years or 10 games. Hmm. Jeff Lurie, the owner, if we like this guy, let's draft him. You know, that's the kind of discussions you have. Either you're going to drop a guy, Jeff Lurie, I'll give you an example. Jeff Lurie wasn't comfortable with Randy Moss. He wasn't comfortable with the reports that we got on Randy Moss from his time in West Virginia, uh, when he was you know, Florida State, Notre Dame, Marshall, all these things. Jeff Lurie said, Brian, I, I'm just not comfortable with the player. And I said, yes, sir, but he is our best receiver on that board. He says, well, then I will be the one that's responsible for that. And I said, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, he made the call on that one. That's when players will drop off a board, be taken off a board, uh, maybe maybe you elevate a guy because of some stuff that you saw with the, the interview or, hey, the medical was better than what we thought. Now we can put the guy where he's at. So that's where – I'll tell you this, though, Vach, what happens with media scouts, mm -hmm. they catch up with the real scouts. you know, And, and I mean that in respect. I mean media scouts are, are, are great, and I appreciate all the men and women that, that love this with, with all their heart and work hard at it. But then all of a sudden – we go to the combine and the media, What? who's around some of these scouts, the media. So all of a sudden you start running names by them, by these real scouts. And they'll say, you got that guy too high. Sure. You got that guy too low, you know, and that's where, that's where the fluctuation of media happens. Uh, the media scouts is instead of saying like you and I've been doing here for the last several weeks, these are our guys. Yeah. We're going to be right or wrong. And people are going to go back and they're going to pull this. They're going to say, Broadus, you were really wrong about that guy. Vox, you were really, really right about that guy. And that's where, you know, we, we're going to try and stay consistent from what we're doing. And I think that's important. But now the media scout is starting to have access to the real scout. And that's where your boards fluctuate. So, so just going back to the, you know, to the real scout and the real teams, right? Like, what is it? And pardon me if this question isn't worded all the way correct. Work with me, right? So, so what what is it that breaks the dam of comfort, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. This is Randy Moss. I'm yeah. not comfortable with Randy Moss. Is it like talent? Right. Because at the end of the day, like holy, like that's Randy Moss, right? So, what yeah. is it? What is it that can like? Okay, I'm uncomfortable with the double digit surgeries of Peyton Wilson, right? Right, but. Okay, damn, he's been healthy for two years. He's been playing just fine. He's a lot more healthy than Overshawn. He's more healthy than, you know, the uh, right. you know, the right. uh, um Texas running back right now. He's more recently healthy than all those guys, right? So what right. is it that makes me go, damn, bro, that's in Peyton Wilson right there. Let let me just tell my what is it that 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 yeah. breaks the dam of comfort to make me draft a guy that you're not comfortable with? Well, it, it sometimes it comes down to like I did with Jeff Lurie, you know, we got him involved in what we were doing and I wanted the owner to be involved. Sure. I wanted, you know, I, I'd come from a system in green Bay where we didn't have an owner. <laughs> so we really had to just report to each other and to Ron Wolf. Um, by the way, his son Elliot's running the new England Patriot draft. I used to babysit him mm -hmm. juice boxes. And now I'm uh, watching a kid run an NFL draft and he'll do a great job in new England. But the, the, the thing about it is that it, depending on how involved you want to get ownership in, how, how involved do you want to get, um, you know, if, if they're comfortable, because it, it, the bottom line is they're the ones spending the money on the player. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones that are going to have to sign the checks and, and negotiate the contracts and things like that. So you want to make sure that they're completely in on the loop. And, and I, I thought it was important to get him involved and, he made some really, really good decisions. He, you know, if you asked him right now about the Randy Moss one, he would he would nod his head and say, "Hey, that's on me." I mean, I've I don't ever bring that up. I've seen Jeff Lurie a bunch at meetings and things like that, and sure. social settings and stuff. And he, he's always you know thank me for what we did in Philly and you know the thorough, the detail and all that. That's all you can do, Vosh. Sure. You can you present the player, and there's people maybe above you that that are going to make that call that they're going to say. I don't feel comfortable with Randy Moss because these are all the things that we found out about him through an FBI study, sure. which we used. Uh, and, you know, that's that's where we're at. But later in life, what did Jeff Lurie do? He took a chance on Michael Vick. Yeah. You know, so maybe Jeff Lurie learned from the Randy Moss situation later that, you know, I, I need to give 
Michael Vick a chance. Mm -hmm. But he ultimately made the call. That's what breaks in the Cowboys' way of thinking. Uh, Will does a great job of putting all the information together. He does a great job of the, of marriage with the scouts, the coaches, and the Joneses. That's a very difficult thing to have to deal with with three different bodies. But ultimately, that comes the the decision comes into Jerry and Steven's lap, and that's where any type of uncomfortable. Um, there were players. I remember players that were that were injured. Uh, there was a defensive tackle from uh, from Detroit Rodgers that had a toe problem. Carlos Rice. And yeah, and and I remember Jerry. We, we got to us in the second round, and I remember Jerry looking at Jim Mauer and going, "Tell me again why I can't draft this guy. Tell me again why." Mm -hmm. And he says he's got a toe problem that's got needs to be fixed. It's going to require a surgery. It's not going to go. But the, you know, the kid ended up playing a long time. I'll give you another example real quick if I can. Please. Um, we did this with uh, Larry Allen in Green Bay. Our doctor, Pat McKenzie, great doctor. When, you know, when they start to talk about guys that are fixing knees all over the country nowadays, Pat McKenzie in Green Bay is a guy that people go and fly to Green Bay to get their knee fixed. And so Pat failed Larry Allen on a rotator cuff problem. And Ron Wolf goes, okay, fine. We play we played Dallas every playoff or during the season and Ron would walk up to Dr. McKenzie and go, you see that number 73 over there? He's going to kick our ass today. And you failed him on the physical. And, you know, he kind of did it in a playing way, mm -hmm. but in, and you know, he just reminded him that like, listen, this is our livelihood with these players, you know, make sure that we're right about them. Make sure that we're absolutely 100%, you know, buttoned up about is can this guy play can this guy play for a long time like i said i'm sure there's a lot of guys that when jeremiah trotter finished his long career went you know damn we we didn't see that we we did not see that and they probably got some advice that that probably took them in that direction but to answer your question ultimately it's going to fall on jerry and steven for the dallas cowboys to make that decision it'll just really suck if you go all right Peyton Wilson, we don't think that you can play. Yeah. And then he gives you an incredible five years. And and maybe he yeah. retires after those five years because he's been so hurt or whatever. But boy, what if those five years were explosive? Um, you know, yeah. you would you would hate to be the guy in, you know, Carolina that says, hey, man, we should draft CJ Stroud. And somebody says, yeah. test score. <laughs> Let's go get yeah. Bryce or something. And now you're stuck with Bryce yeah. and CJ tears it up in Houston. That has to suck, right? Yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, you – you are as really you're only as good as your information, and there are guys that you absolutely trust in that room. There's some gals you trust in that room that say things, and when they when they say it, you know, um, I you know I just I remember like drafts where coaches spoke up, and and I thought it was out of place. I thought it was out of place. The um, you know, I, I'm Stephen Jackson. I'll give you an example. You know, we Mo Koth on the running back coach we got the chance where we had Steven Jackson on the board there in the draft and Parcells and Jerry were all sitting in there and Steven Jackson's on the board and, and um, you know, he's got a back, he's got a back thing that he's dealing with. So we have that in mind, but Mo Cawthon speaks up and says, these running backs that are in the second round are just as good as Steven Jackson. That turned the room around. Now we ended up making a trade. That was the trade that we made with Buffalo if they took JP Lossman, the quarterback out of Tulane. So we, you know, we gave up that pick to get next year's one, which ended up being uh, Marcus Spears. Mm. You know, that was the 2005 draft, but we had a chance to draft Steven Jackson and, you know, and a coach just spoke up like, Oh no, these running backs in the second round are just as good as, and that really wasn't the case. Yes. That really <laughs> wasn't the case. Yeah. And so now four months of work, on a board was just thrown into chaos because a coach made a statement about a player that really wasn't true. Mm. And so now you're in, in that, and then now you, you get influence, Jerry and Bill, they get influenced and they're like, mm, okay, well, yeah, we made the trade. We backed out of there. You know, we got Marcus Spears. It, it turned out fine. It's the kind of thing that can happen to you. Got to be really careful what you say. In a in a Jim Garrett, Jason Garrett's dad, 
Jim Garrett said Drew Henson was going to be the next Troy Aikman. He said that in a meeting. And we were all sitting there, and Sean Payton looked at me and goes, he's out of his damn mind. Mm. And, and, and I go, I go, what's, you know, and we're all kind of looking at each other like, what just happened? And all of a sudden, you could see Jerry, glasses on the end of his nose, looking over the top of the glasses when he heard Troy Aikman's name and Jim Garrett say it. All of a sudden, you're like going, whoa, 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 what, what, just, what just happened here? Mm. And I just, I, guess, I remember Sean Payton going, that, that he, this, this is not going to work. This guy is not, and he was the one coach. He was the one coach that we that we had that you know when everybody went around the room. Sean Payne goes, "This guy can't play." I'm sorry, and it was it was that that's everybody goes, "Okay, thanks, Sean. Appreciate your insight. Well, we're we're, we're going to move on here." So that's the kind of things you have to be careful of of who gets influence, and sometimes with Jerry Jones, whoever gets to him last. Mm-hmm can influence what direction. And the Cowboys have done a great job if we've seen War Room Cam with, okay, Ryan Shazier goes off the board. They're handing in the card. Robert Blackwell's got the name on the card. They're handing it in. Steelers take him. Okay, now we got to pivot. Hmm. You know, all of a sudden, you know, Jerry, Johnny Manziel's on that board. And then, you know, Steven goes, well, yeah, so is Zach Martin. And we got Zach Martin's tag higher. You know, that's what we're going to do. And then everybody's quiet, and, and and that's that's when it's hard in that room is when it gets to the point where Jerry speaks up, and you, you're going to see people with real conviction. You're going to see Will McClay, and Will McClay stepped up for Mozzie Smith. We've seen that. You know, you you know when the, when the decision makers step up, that can either affect the room in a really positive way or take it in a direction that can maybe take your draft into a place you don't want to go. So do you do you think that's and look, chat, everybody watching right now, we're we're gonna get to this top fifty board, but this is this is this is gonna right. So so Brian, so do you do you think and look, man, shouts out to the to the Joneses, they've done great things for you and all that, right? But do you think yeah. that that's a that's sort of a disadvantage that that Jerry and really Honestly, all of them, right? Like, they, like they're delegators, right? Like, like they're they're right. going to someone else for an opinion. If our GM was a football guy, and they say, right. "Hey, man, Drew Henson is Troy Aikman," yeah. and instead of him yeah. going, "He Troy Aikman for real," he goes, yeah. "You out of your damn mind? He ain't no damn Troy." Yeah. So, would, so would it benefit you more? Because yeah. I tell people this all the time. Jer- you know, Jerry can can act like he's GM for real, but he's not watching right. film on six round picks. He's not looking at it. You know, oh, Kendrick's Shoot. just got cut. Let's go watch some film of him. The linebacker. Kendrick, he, he's not watching film on those guys, right? Do, do you think right. that that's twice the problem or twice the detriment that 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 we're dealing with? That our GM isn't like super active football guy to where he can watch film on Drew Henson and say, "Man, you must yeah. be damn crazy." This ain't Troy Aikman. I learned one thing about watching film with Jerry. The thing you had to do was you had to kind of describe the player you're watching and compare him to another guy that he might know. Then the light bulb went off for Jerry. It's like, oh, okay. See, that's where that's where I think it, it, you know that the, the, they try really hard. You're right, Jerry. Jerry will sit in those draft meetings, though. He will sit there. He will listen. So I've seen Stephen Jones. I've seen Stephen Jones challenge a scout, several scouts. And, and like a scout would say something, then the next day come back and say something completely different. Mm-hmm. And Stephen go, well, let me remind you what you said yesterday. Let me remind you of this. And and so all of a sudden the scout will, you know, crawfish. And if you know anything about crawfish, crawfish, they go back. They swim backwards. Yeah. You know, they go backwards. And so that's the biggest fear that you have going in there. But yeah, when when Jerry heard Jim Garrett, who he trusts, when he when he hears Drew Henson, Troy Aikman, and then you got Parcells who wants the player too. Now you've got the hmm, there's the we're 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 confirming it here. Here we go. That your your scout that you trust just said that this is Troy Aikman. That should get your attention, you know. And then and then you got Sean Payton is the one going. These guys are full of s. No way. There's, there's no way this guy's. But that's that's the to answer your question. I kind of feel like I think Jerry's gotten better. I think in the early two thousands with us, we made so many mistakes. Mm. And I was sitting there. I'd come from programs where I'm like. I, felt like we did it the right way 
and the way our boards were set up and stuff. And but we listened to too many people. I think that was Jerry Jones's biggest problem. But now I think he trusts Will and the scouts more than he did our group. Sure. We would we you know. But Jacob Rogers, USC tackle, second round, played very little for the Cowboys. I'm sorry, I'm going way back for our listeners, here, but I'm just so I'm just giving you an example. Like Tom Saskowski, who found Larry Allen, uh, who brought that you know to the board, and Jeff Ireland, who's went out with the Saints. We're talking about Jacob Rogers, and Bill Parcells is going on and on and on about Jacob Rogers, and Tom Saskowski stands up and goes. Bill, he's everything you hate in a player. He's mm-hmm. everything you hate in an offensive tackle. What are we doing? Yeah. And, and and Ireland's like, Bill, I agree with Tom. And Bill's like, no, no, you guys got the player wrong. You know, and that's what happens. And then, so if you did have a guy like if Jerry, Jerry's going to kind of go with the coach on that one. Mm-hmm. But I think now Jerry's looking at his scouting department and like, wait a minute. They've been right a lot more than my coaching staff has been. Mm. And I think that's where Jerry has changed over the year. Jerry couldn't Jerry couldn't look over the glasses and call out Jim Garrett. Today, he might be able to call out Jim Garrett for mm. that. Wow. Fantastic stories. One more thing. I, I'm sorry. I, no, I was like old no, man story no. time there. Brian, Brian, you good. I just want to ask you for one more story. Then we're going to do this uh, This uh, right. top 50, I promise. Uh, could you please tell the story? You told it a long time ago. You know, back in the day when me and you weren't peers, I was just a fan of yours, right? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and and I don't know where you told the story, right? But can you tell the story about um, uh, Campo and no phones and Jerry with no phones. Can you please, oh. please, please tell that story from my platform, please? I'll try and do it quick here because I know we got to get to a list. We got you. Um, we're in, we're in, <laughs> we're in Wichita Falls. It's Dave Campo's first uh, job as a head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. So we're all sitting in a meeting, and it's all the coaches and myself, Larry Lacewell. We're all kind of hanging out there, and Dave's giving his talk and all that. And so he starts to go through all these rules, and he gets to the rules. He's like, "Listen, guys." Don't want cell phones in the meeting. Don't want you answering cell phones. It just as he said, I don't want you answering cell phones because he he was kind of going through it and he says it's a two hundred dollar fine. You, if any of you get caught cell phone using cell phone, two hundred dollar fine. I don't I don't care. I don't care. It just as his words are coming out of his mouth, Jerry's phone rings in his pocket, <laughs> and Dave's tall. Everybody hears the phone ring, you know, and Jerry's got that flip phone. And he reaches into his pocket and Dave kind of just kind of talking and he looks over at Jerry. Jerry looks at the phone, flips it open, says, hello. And he switches the phone to his other ear and he reaches into his, his money clip and he takes two $100 bills out, <laughs> hands them to Campo, puts them on the desk, and he just keeps talking. <laughs> Dave's going into this like it's his first meeting, his big speech about, you know, rules and regulations. And he says, yeah, $200 fine if your phone goes off and if you answer. And Jerry reaches into his money clip, pulls out two $100 bills and throws them in front of Dave and just keeps on talking. <laughs> I bet they was just brand new, too. They was just crisp $100 bills. He just flipped it was, off. Yeah, them. they were just like they just got printed. Oh, you know? man. It was one of those things. But. That that's there's there's a lot of beauty. I know people. I, I just wish people who are cowboy fans oh, that's funny. got to work with Jerry Jones for a year just to kind of just kind of take it all in. I think you'd have a different appreciation of Jerry, good and bad. I oh, think good man. and bad, you'd have a different appreciation. Brian, man, one day we're gonna do a show where we just tell <laughs> stories, man. That, that's that was that's that's fantastic. And there were a lot of crazy times back then. A lot of crazy, too too crazy to. Do.